If you're listening to music at the gym, you've probably realized that it has lots and lots of benefits. Like you can hit more PRs, you can last longer when you're doing volume days, and even with cardio, you can go that extra mile just because that music is pumping you up and you're kind of going with the beat. And there's also a strong chance that you rely on that music to get through your workout. And if your headphones happen to die during that period, it's like your whole workout feels off. So here's what happened to me on my latest intensity day workout. I started out with my first pressing movement. I warmed up, all that good stuff. Took a two minute rest break before my peak set. And would you know that my headphones just happened to die right before I was about to push that lift. I couldn't do it. I could not do it for the life of me. And I was just like, gosh, why do my headphones have to die at that exact moment? Usually once I get my first exercise, like once I succeed on my first exercise, all the other exercises, they seem like I can do all of them with no problems. Like if you fail your first exercise, that just kind of messes with your mindset. But I was just like, you know what, they're dead. I'm not gonna go to a charger and charge them. Nah, I'm just gonna go through my workout. So I got my Bose headphones, my backup headphones, and I was just gonna listen to nothing because they have very excellent noise canceling. I was just gonna listen to nothing and try and zone into the lift. And once I realized that I had no music to go off of, nothing to hype myself up externally, I had to produce all of that energy through myself. The lift totally changed. It was no longer just a Z press with some nice jamming music. It's like a certain nervousness came over me. And it wasn't like the nervousness like, oh, I'm doubting myself on this lift. It was that nervousness where you know you've got to do it. You have to get this lift. And I forgot the name of this one lifter that said an amazing quote, but he would ask people, would you be able to do five more pounds on this lift had it been to save your family's life or someone you love? And everybody would say yes. And so he said, well, then a recovery issue is not the issue and food intake is not the issue and water intake isn't the issue. The issue was your mind. You can't do anything unless your mind is certain that it can do it. It doesn't matter how strong you are. If your mind tells you no, you ain't gonna do it, okay? So I was so engaged in that Z press that the weight shot up so fast. It was almost, it was faster than my warm up sets with the music. So you see where I'm going with this? For example, if you close your eyes during a lift, you're not gonna be focusing on that girl in yoga pants on the right or that guy squatting like five more plates than you on the left. You're gonna be focused on your lift. You're gonna be focused on your body what you're trying to accomplish in the gym. Because going to the gym is for you. You're not trying to build someone else's body unless you're training them. You're going into the gym to improve yourself, improve yourself mentally, physically. So when you close your eyes, you're thinking about that lift. You're channeling all your energy into that lift. You're not thinking about what happened at the job. You're just getting set, getting tight. You're focusing on your form. Your form will probably be very good because you'll notice minor differences because when your eyes are open you're focusing on all the micro details let's say you're kind of arching your lower back you're going to feel your lower back because instead of engaging your senses to the max like your eyes are taking in things your, your ears are taking in things your mouth you're, you're tasting the air i guess you're smelling things like it's all distractions eliminate distractions at the gym. That's the main point of this video. So closing your eyes and your ears can actually benefit you a lot and I highly recommend that you try it. Now for me personally, it seems like this method works more for me on the pressing movements rather than the pulls. So when I go and do rack pulls, classical music, like that epic, intense classical music, that gets me every time. I've never failed a rack pull with the classical music going. It's just something where like you hear you hear the vocals, they're just like oh, 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 and then all of a sudden you hear the drums kind of like doo, 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 doo. dude, how are you gonna fail with that going on? You feel like an absolute beast in the gym. But it's something it's something with the pressing movements where I kind of need that full focus and isolation. At the same time, on weighted dips, it's very good for me to have music. So it's just kind of testing what works for you the most, what exercises it works on, and just, just, yeah, just try out. That's pretty much lifting in general. You can't just follow cookie cutter stuff. You can't just do what the guy next to you is doing. You're gonna have to figure out what works for you. And in this case, 
Not always listening to music helped me. And one last tip, if you do wanna to listen to music in the gym, I highly recommend checking out your beats per minute for the individual song. And make sure it's pretty high. Like you don't want a, a, a song with 100 beats per minute at the gym. I mean, you, you can get that, but if you really want to kind of make your brain speed up a little bit, like do 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 you don't want some of them slow jazz songs at the gym. I mean, save that for your mobility work, okay? So get hyped up, listen to some metal. I, I never liked metal. I used to hate metal. I used to make fun of people who listen to metal. My friend plays metal at the gym one day. I listened to it. I'm like, hmm, th this is gonna psych me up for my lifts. And all of a sudden I'm listening to metal at the gym. So just open your mind, try new things, and don't just go with the flow. Try out the weird things that people are doing. As long as it keeps you safe, try out the weird things. The, the weirdest exercises, this is what I've learned, the weirdest exercises are often the best. The Jefferson deadlift, for example. It's weird, you're pulling the bar between your legs, but you have a more upright back position, so your chance of injury goes down compared to regular deadlifts. Another weird exercise, Zerker deadlifts. I mean, it looks pretty cool at the top when you're holding the weight like this, but when you go down that far and you're just like this, it looks kind of weird. But at the same time, it's gonna build your spinal erectors like crazy. You see where I'm going with this? So guys, we finally hit 300 subs, actually 317 last time I checked, and I'm just shocked at how fast this channel's growing. We're on our way to 400, 500, 1000 and beyond. So thank you all so much. It really helps when you share this channel with others and just comment like subscribe all that good stuff and just get engaged with the content i love replying to you guys comments i love talking with you guys it's it's fantastic and we're going to build a solid community and i personally think that we can hit 400 in two weeks so thank you so much for watching this video go into the gym i highly recommend it just turn off your music for one workout see how it feels and you could even take the headphones off, even though you might have to listen to that cheesy, crappy uh, gym music. Just, just deal with it and see if you can really focus on your lift. And you might hit even more PRs now since you're more tuned into the lift. By the way, this isn't just a fake background. This is a legit place. Ooh, look at that drop. Jeez Louise. Yeah, that's a real place.